welcome back to the career series, everyone. Thank you so much for taking the time to catch up with Kessner. Today we have Mo. He's going to talk about all his experiences in dentistry, going through dental school, and I'm really excited to catch up on that. But go ahead if you are thinking about dentistry, if you are thinking about pursuing dental school, or appreciate your dentist in general, go ahead, follow, subscribe to the channel. We both really appreciate that. Mo, thank you so much for catching up with me today. Thank you for having me, Kessman. I'm glad to be here. So excited. Awesome. Before we get to all things dental, let's go ahead for the people that don't know who you are. Quick introductions. Who are you? What are you up to? We'll start off with that. Sure. So my name is Mahmoud, and uh, I had the pleasure of meeting Kessner in uh, undergrad at UC Davis, which is the best university in the world. There we go. Um, yeah, exactly. Um, and after that, I kind of went into a flux of, um, let me get some work experience, right? So uh, kind of a nerd, closet nerd, public nerd. I know um, it kind of means different things, but I, lo I will love science and I will love working with my hands. Right. So went into the whole engineering route, went to work for different things and founded that dentistry really had a blend of everything that I wanted to do. Mm. So here we are, slaving away. Nice. And you are in your second year of dental school. Yes, sir. Second year. Can't wait to finish. Excited to finish. That's true. Quick shout out to the school you're at. NYU College and Dentistry. There we go. NYU. So always have a deep appreciation for New York. So I've only been there once, but anyway. So Mo, I've got a good question Thinking back to our conversations, right? You said we met in our wonderful immunology class where we excelled together, right? I, I just really appreciate having you in that group that we were in, that, that small group of just doing lab together, working on our different projects. And that's why I'm really excited to catch up today. But I know how much you love food, right? Yeah. So yeah. for someone that appreciates both food and apparently taking care of your teeth, Shed some light on how your personality complements your passion to pursue dentistry. For sure. So food, I feel like people eat to live. I live to eat. That's the way I think <laughs> about it, right? Um, because there's a cultural aspect about food. There's a medicinal right. aspect about food. Yeah. Um, you bring people together through food, right? Um, so one of the things I like to do is explore different food places um, because it's, it's like a hobby. You get a friends together. Um, the passion about food, like when we were in undergrad, I love checking out the local spots, posting about it. Um, you know, Hey, grab a cup of coffee with me. I know a good spot, right? It opens so many avenues of just knowing places. Um, the whole aspect of dentistry and food is really interesting. So the fact that you brought it up, food in itself is a culprit for oral health, right? If you're not eating the right foods, that's going to affect your oral health. If you're not, you know, supplementing your body with the good stuff you're going to have a bunch of oral problems mm -hmm. as well, you know, as well as uh, other health diseases. Yeah. But so for me, it was really looking at what type of foods should I stay away from? What type of foods I should go to, but still enjoy my life. So it's a good place to live in the middle, right? Have cotton candy, have Snickers bars, whatever you want to eat, but just make sure you're taking care of your oral health because then lets you eat more in the future. You know what I'm saying? So um, passionate about food, passionate about dentistry, and they really just interplay together. And it's like a perfect marriage uh, of, of two different passions. So um, yeah, that's where it is. Wow. I love how you said that food is a, is a look into our personalities and it's a, it's a really big compliment of when we think about oral health, right? And you yeah. know, that seems pretty intuitive, right? What you eat and how you eat it does affect your body in different ways and including your teeth mm. but i loved how you said if you love to eat snickers go ahead and eat snickers if you love to eat con candy go ahead and do that it's more of what habits are you training yourself to make sure that you take care of yourself and take care of your teeth and hopefully improve your oral health instead of you know harm it but when i think about all of your experiences with food. I remember scrolling through your Instagram once. I know you've changed that around a little bit, but back then, a few years back when I was going through your Instagram feed and looking at all these different types of foods, I was thinking, wow, how does this guy stay super fit, super buff, but have to eat all these foods and he has amazing teeth? 
while at it. I mean, look at you smiling right now with those big pearly whites. It's Likewise, just, man. Look at you. No, not even. But I was just thinking, it's, it's great to see that when I was thinking back a few years and following your, your dentistry journey or looking on social media and seeing that you're pursuing dental school, those are just two things I naturally put together. I was thinking Mo loves food and Mo loves taking care of his teeth. Yeah. And I loved how you touched upon that. You know, it's more of the habits. It's more of your, your, your take on how am I going to sustain my health? How am I going to sustain the way that my teeth are? While also keep in mind that I can still eat whatever I want, right? Yeah. I don't have to limit my diet per se to make sure that I still take care of my teeth. And that's just really important to, to think about is for, for me, at least I'm very fortunate enough that I've never had cavities. Right. And what? I was right. Wow. Crazy thing. A lot of people don't know that, but at the same time too, they, they asked me, did you even eat candy? Did you, like, what <laughs> did you do to never get cavities? And I, I tell people I've always had candy. I love, mm. right. All types of candies. I, I, I try to stay away from the, from the milk chocolates and whatnot, but all of your, your, what is that called? Your Twizzlers, all of your Skittles. That, that oh. was my thing when I was a kid. Yeah. And the fact that I never had cavities just baffled people. And yeah. I was a pretty big advocate for brushing my teeth twice a week or not twice a week, <laughs> twice a day. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> we're, we're going to leave that in twice a day. <laughs> and I floss every now and then. All right. I'm still guilty. I'm a lot better at now, but I was re pretty conscious about how I took care of my teeth. And so the fact that I never got cavities and still got to eat all those certain things. I love how you pointed that out. It's, you know, you just got to make sure that you have good habits in the end. So that's 100%. pretty good. And pretty good. let me ask you, with your parents, were your parents pretty strict on your oral hygiene? Because that plays a huge part into how your teeth are going to turn out, right? Um, that's a great question. Uh, my parents definitely, definitely were a big advocate in taking care of my teeth. I, I would wake up and the first thing they would say is go brush your teeth. And then right before school, right before we left, they said, brush again, you just ate. So, I mean, I definitely did have that, that push or that pressure to make sure that my teeth were taken care of because I had to get braces, right? I had to, I, I didn't have the best teeth growing up in terms of how they grew out, but I never had cavities, right? So... <laughs> I still went to the dentist pretty often. I think that's also a huge part too, is not just your own personal habits, but you know, if you have the opportunity to see the dentist every so often, right? Or on your normal schedule, six months, whatever that is, you know, take advantage of it at the same time too. I know a lot of people not privileged to have that opportunity to see the dentist as often. So it's a, it's a give and take where you can. And so if you have the ability to control how often you brush, definitely do that. But if you also have the you're within the parameters of control to see the dentist six every six months, definitely go ahead and do that. I'll touch upon this later, but you know I hate the dentist, so but we'll get we'll get into that. We'll get into that. So nothing personal. I'll explain more about that later. But you get it a lot, by the way. Get that? I'm sure you do. So you briefly touched upon it when you said you tried out different walks of life different journeys before you got into dentistry speak about what what led you down to nyu sure so um you know most of the students that go to college right what's the purpose of college is for you to get a degree and to get a career essentially right the underlying concept is to make something that brings you in money through your degree um and depending on the path that you choose I, you can go down making money route and just providing for your family or you can go down the passionate route and hopefully, if those two intersect, you can do something you love while making money. Uh, I always knew that I wanted to do something that I could continuously just be better at, right? Mm -hmm. I always wanted to learn. I like learning new things, which can be problematic because you never stick to one thing, though. Um, so I went down and I, I, you know, graduated and I said, let me, let me go into the pharmaceutical industry. Let me see what that's about. Um, and then I ventured into working for the Department of Defense, working in engineering. And I said, oh, this is cool. You know, you go from working on missiles to working on like hazardous uh, materials, transport and sterilization. Um, and I really tried everything and I fell in love with it all. 
So that, that's where it became problematic because every experience that you have, you fall in love with, you learn these new skills and it just makes you like, oh my God, I want to do this. Now, if the money is good, you want to do it more and more. But then you get to this cross link of, okay, am I doing something that is just making me happy? Is there something I could do to better cater for a different population or somebody that maybe doesn't have the voice or the, you know, the capabilities of becoming happy. And that for me was when I took my little brother to the dentist. Um, so my little brother, Omar, he, he was diagnosed with autism at the age of five and you know, the sweetest kid, you know, he, you know, if he knows you, he's a, you know, he'll be open with you. So I took him to the dentist and, you know, he sat down and the dentist saw that he was really nervous. He was very anxious. And so I would always walk in and sit with him, but this dentist was kind of different. He said, I'm going to have to strap him. I said, excuse me, <laughs> what? He said, yeah, I'm going to have to strap him because if he moves, uh, and I, I understand the, the reasoning for it, but at the end of the day, we're not, we're not animals. I don't believe you should even strap animals. I mean, come on. So I said, there's no way in hell you strapping my brother. Uh, so I took him, we went, we got ice cream and I said, bro, I'm sorry you went through that. You're never going to go through that again. And then I said, okay. There's more people like that who are nervous when they go to the doctor. They're nervous. They're scared. They see power drills coming and they just get very anxious. So for me, I said, okay, there's a, there's a population of people that I feel I could contribute to more. I could do better. I can make the experience more, you know, just make them feel good about going to the dentist, which is what you want. And yeah. keep in mind that some of these patients that come in who have these problems, they they've never had dental edu education oral health education they don't know sometimes they can't even brush their own teeth yeah so you have one bad experience with a dentist what are the chances are going to come back never right right good early intervention good practice good relationship with these special patients uh can make the world of a difference and as soon as i saw that you know i took my brother to a specialist who specialized working with special needs patients autistic right. patients it was, a, it was such a different experience. And my brother liked going to the dentist. Just, you wow. know, it like, became like nothing. So I quit my job and I said, hey, I'm, I'm going to do this. And, you know, I'm going to be your dentist. So that's, that's how I ended up in dentistry. That's powerful. I love that story because, I mean, at least two things when I think about when, when you tell me that story. The first one is we come out of college with this idea of maybe it, it goes down to different ideas, right? One is pursuing the money. So monetary motivation, right? Or the other one is personal, personal motivation or personal interests, right? And so a lot of people sometimes focus on one or the other, what are they really passionate about? Or what are they really interested in? Or opposed to what am I going to be financially stable with so that I can support myself in? Not to say that those are the only two ways that people look at post- yeah graduation or post-college experiences but it's it's definitely one of the top two on your mind as soon as you graduate from college and so for you you definitely had a little bit of both right you had a love for science you had a passion for science and you just had a passion for learning which i really always really appreciated and so you went into the engineering side of it you experienced the lab i love how you had opportunities with the the dod and you know, a lot of those experiences are something that you would have never had if you had not positioned yourself to ex at least experience it, right? Cool. Seeing where you are now with your strong interest and your, your deep story of why you're pursuing dentistry, you know, who knows if you would have had those opportunities to work for the Department of Defense or in, a, in an engineering lab if you went straight into to dental school, right? So it's, it's something that we do appreciate. And I love how you said we, you got a lot of skills out of it, skills that you wouldn't have otherwise fell in love with. But then at the same time too, going back to your, your powerful story of that one experience you had with your brother, right? And that's such a profound story because I can really attest to my fear, like I said earlier, of the dentist and going to the dentist a lot as a kid, getting braces, you know, having a decent oral, decent oral health, but also still having to go pretty often when you describe that moment of power drills and just this very traditional idea of what it means to sit on that on that chair and for the light to shine in your face and that for the dentist to just go in 
for you to be so vulnerable, I'm sure a lot of people listening right now can understand or feel what that's like of, you know, in that moment when they're cleaning your teeth, you're pretty much helpless and you're just sitting there, right? Waiting for whatever's going to happen. That anticipation of, if you have sensitive gums, like I do, I completely hated flossing, right? And when the dentist would go in and floss my teeth, they had no remorse. They had no empathy. They just, man, just thinking about that is making me sweat, right? So I just think back to when I was 12 and I was a kid, I just really dreaded going to the dentist every single time. And I love how you pointed out that one of your missions right now, one of your, one of the things that pulls your heart is it's important for people to go to the dentist, not just to take care of your teeth, but you talked about this, this advocacy for oral health and oral education, right? A lot of those maybe small tips of how to take care of your teeth better or what foods to stay away from or what habits you should building is you get that from the dentist when you go to the dentist and you can read upon it you can go to school about it but a lot of it is that in-person interaction from your dentist of that those tailored personalized tips or there's those personalized information that you should be doing for yourself and that's something that we all need to experience hopefully and a lot of us when we were kids at least speaking for myself I didn't want to I didn't want to go in. I knew that it was good for me. I knew yeah. it's what I needed, but I just didn't want to have to deal with any of that. And so my parents would nag me about it. They would tell me that I needed to go and I knew I needed to go, right? Yeah. I knew that it was something that was good for me, but I just could not get over this fear of flossing. I could not get over this fear of when they go in and scrape your gums or scrape the What's that called? Remind me. The plaque off your gums with these sharp tools that you just write in this very vivid image. And when I think to your story, right, having to strap down your brother for, for, I'm sure the doctor had good intentions, right? You know, for the sake of, for, for not harming him, you know, being liable for any other injuries outside of, right, what he was doing. And so I know he had good intentions, but like you said, it, it shouldn't be something that, a child per se, right? Let alone an adult, but a child to be strapped down and to be restrained during their own dental procedure. That just doesn't sit well with a lot of us. And so for you to experience that as detrimental or as traumatizing as that experience is to see where you are now, right? Pursuing dental school for this reason of providing better care and providing a more holistic approachable care of what it means to be a dentist and welcoming, inviting people into the space of, you know, I'm going to try my best. Yeah. The situation or the procedure might hurt a little bit, depending on your own, your own habits and your own situation with your teeth. But at the same time, I'm going to make it as comforting as humanly possible. Right. And I'm going to connect with you in a way that's going to fulfill my heart because that's something that you just talked about is, When you were going through engineering, when you were going through working with in these different spaces, you were missing that part of you that wanted to do more, wanted to have a more community driven aspect and reach a community that maybe was not being reached out to. And for you, that was working with working through dentistry. And I love how you had that that calling or that passion or that that motivation to reach a to reach a people or reach a group that needed better better oral education right sure. so that's just really inspiring to hear that whatever space you're a part of whether you're pursuing dentistry or whether you're pursuing these different careers or fields it's it really comes down to the community because you yeah. can work for yourself and you can be self-motivated and all those things are great right not saying that you shouldn't think about that but just like how you had those experiences with wanting more through through your occupation at the time and pursuing dentistry. I felt the same way when I was pursuing my, my role in education, right? I was working in retail at the time. And, you know, I, I knew that there was something more for me. I knew that there was something pushing me to reach a bigger community outside of just retail. And so that's not speaking against people that work in retail, but for me personally, there was something more. I had to be reaching a different group. And for that, that was kids for me. And so I really like where I'm at now. And 
for you too, Mo, I know that you are thriving in dental school, right? Because you had the intentions of not just for yourself, right? You say the money's okay or the money's better in some places, but for you, it was, it was more than that. And I think that's something that we all can really appreciate and we can all really contemplate or think about is outside of the money, what is really going to drive our hearts so that we find that satisfaction. So, so I really appreciate that. And it's such an important question that, you know, when you brought up education, Kessner, there's, I think that really translates into every field because the less educated we are, yeah. the more problematic things are going to become, right? If right. we don't know about not just oral hygiene, right? Yeah. Bad oral hygiene education, that's a life. You're setting yourself up for a lifetime of problems and complications. <laughs> yeah. If you don't know how to read, you're not going to be very well-versed in oral or medical health literacy, right? Yeah. So the sooner that you educate and the more experienced that to, to teach people that it's good to know things because you're going to make these beautiful uh, characteristics and, mm-hmm. and set you up for life. Right. Like that, it's good, you know, and, and patient populations, huge uh, right. oral regions, you know, that are less socioeconomically well off yeah. have complications. So yeah. um, you, you really, money is where you, money is in every business, yeah. but it's not every business. You know, it's not everything. So that's good. Money is in every business to some degree, but is it going to be your business? I love that. That's that's a nugget that I'm going to to keep in my pocket. Mo, so thinking about, you know, you said you're in your second year, and I'm sure you've had a lot of different experiences, not just in school, but also practicing and, you know, getting all these expertise. But I'm really curious, what's your what's your biggest fear when it comes to pursuing dentistry or becoming a dentist? Yeah. Um... Well, I'm sure you'll hear a lot of people talk about debt. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. It's, yes, it, it's 1,000% um, expensive to pursue some of these uh, programs. The payoff is there, but you really have to work hard for it. You really yeah. have to set the pace. One of the biggest fears, Kestner, is uh, global health and, and dentistry is really intertwining with medicine these days. Mm, that's good. There's, there's more people are, are likely to go see their dentist than the regular physician, their medical doctor, because you only go to the doctor when you're sick, technically, right? Yeah. But people go to the dentist when they're somewhat healthy. So you're exposed to dentists a little bit more frequently Mm. than you are to a medical practitioner. Right. Um, That said, it's a different lifestyle. So one of the biggest fears that I have, and I know some of my colleagues have as well, is when we graduate with all this debt, with (laughs) all this experience, Yeah. Am I going to be able to live a life that's comfortable for me, for my family, but still pursue it? Because mm. you have big conglomerates like Walmart. Walmart rolled out Walmart dentistry. They already have pharmacy. They have optical. Wow. Um, but when they roll out something like dentistry, that's going to compete with a lot of the private organizations, right? So I'm going to go get a filling for $40, whereas I can pay this guy to private, you know, only insurance covers a little bit and I have to pay 120 Wow. Are you going to, and, you know, so that's really going to affect your business. Yeah. Um, and at the end of the day, if you can't do what you spent so much time trying to get to, that's going to bring a lot of stress, a lot of headaches, right? Because then you can't pay off your debt. You can't pay off your loans. You wow. don't get to do what you love and what you've trained for because of this overwhelming fear that you're being outcompeted by, by these huge chains. Like Walmart. Like I never thought Walmart would be a competitor for me. Yeah. But um, it, it really forces you to think about how you can do other things um, in dentistry. And so that, that right now is my biggest fear is I'm going to graduate and then I'm going to have to compete with these uh, private uh, organizations. Wow. I'm, I'm ready, Kessner. Bring it. Yeah, I'm sure. Knowing you, I know you're ready. But that's such a real, that's such a re- real fear, right? I think when I was looking at some of the resources – um, not just that you sent me, but just about dentistry in general. I believe it's about 80% of graduates from dental school pursue private practice, yeah. right? Or, you know, they want to create their own. And so when when you mentioned that this idea of being outcompeted by big conglomerations, big institutions, big organizations that, you know, obviously have good intentions of subsidizing costs when it comes to this, but for you personally, 
for, for people that are personally pursuing their passion within dental school and to graduate with this idea of bringing, bringing this private practice to their, to their places, to their own communities and these communities that they really care about or that they grew up in. And, you know, are they going to be able to sustain themselves through their own business um, or through their own private practice or their own private sector? And that's such a big question that I'm sure a lot of dental students are having. That's something I never really, you know, thought to consider when I go to the dentist, right? I have my own dentist and, you know, I'm a lot better going to the dentist now. All right. So um, bless subsidized costs, right? You know, I'm very thankful that I have that, uh, that, that privilege, but then at the same time, you know, when I think of people like you, friends like you who are in their, in their stages of becoming a dentist, when they get out of it, not just the, the idea of debt, not the idea of, you know, being outcompeted, but the idea of sustainability, because I always thought that dentists make a decent amount of money to, to be, have a comfortable living, right? But with the times that we're in now where there's such a discrepancy, right? Like, I love how you said that how being out-competed as a dentist is, is becoming, a, becoming a new idea that we have to, to be comfortable with or to at least challenge with, right? So back however many years, and correct me if I'm wrong, right? The situation would have been a lot different a decade ago, right? Where maybe dentistry and private practice was a thriving field, but now having you know, companies like Walmart, and I'm sure not, Walmart's not the only one, if rolling out their own um, practice when it comes to dentistry, it becomes a new thing that we have to think about. And as a consumer, right? And as a, as a patient, right? Where are we going to go? Right. Where are we going to find our oral hygiene care? Right. Are yeah. we going to look toward Walmart where we're so accustomed to going to, where we're so attached to? Um, or are we going to support our, our, our dentists like you, right? Who want to build their own private practice, their own business of providing that, providing that care. And so that's a really important question to ask. Not, you know, something I'm processing with myself right now too now. Yeah. Uh, when I get older and when I have a family, when, I, when I'm raising kids, right, where am I going to, to bring my kids to to see the dentist? And that's such an important question to think about. But it's also, it comes down to means, right? What do we have the means to really, to really go to? Because we can't shy away from the fact that if it's cheaper in one place, like we have to really consider that, right? And, and you know, we can get into all different conversations like that of, you know, supporting small businesses, you know, that also goes down the idea of small businesses versus what we're so accustomed to with big corporations. But it's, it's really a personal question. And what can you really personally afford? Because you also don't want to stretch yourself thin, right? At the same time of supporting those that you really care about. And so that becomes a whole new conversation. But I liked how you pointed that out, because that is such a big fear. That would be a fear if I was in dental school, yeah. honestly, of like, who kn I don't know how much it takes to, to really pursue dentistry, right? I'm not pursuing dentistry or in dental school, right? I have my own debt debts that I can attest to, but then I'm sure that it's just as daunting, right? To graduate from not just undergraduate, but yeah. to pursue higher education. And then this very common idea that you just have years of debt. How is that going to play out? when I'm having to outcompete for, for a sustainable job. So that's, that's definitely a big fear. And the thing is, it's like, we're, we're used to competition. Anybody, right. I mean, in right. the graduate program, Dancer, you, you saw that you, there's other students that you're not necessarily competing against, but you, you really are because yeah. there's a ranking. There's uh, spots for residencies, spots for positions, wherever you go. So you're used to a certain level of competition and you have to welcome it and you have to be ready for it. Yeah. But this is much more of an impact because you don't have the funds that these conglomerates have, these big organizations, especially if you're going into something that's already set in stone and, and, and rolling, right? The big right. machine is going on. And so you really have to set yourself apart uh, in, in any way which that you can, uh, whether that's specializing into a certain specialty, whether right. it's uh, starting your business well before you graduate. Um, you know, it, it really is competitive. Uh, if you go into a certain town, you'll have certain dentists around the block, right? Right. So what's one better than the other? 
Mm -hmm. And a lot of the research has been done these days about patient care itself. If they like you, they'll keep coming back. Yeah. So don't go. give them a reason to hate you. You know, <laughs> you, you really, it, there's a lot of things that you have to put forward to make sure that you're not only doing your part to improve the oral health of your patients, right. but also that you're comfortable. It, you, arguably, you have to trust your dentist within seconds. Like yeah. nowhere else that you sit down and within five minutes, somebody's putting their hands in your mouth. Like it, it mm. just doesn't happen in other careers, right? Right. Um, it's like when you board a flight, you have to trust your pilot when you've never met them. Yeah. So there has to be this large trust factor that propels your practice, that promotes your practice. Right. If, they like you, if you do a good job, if you're in it for the right intentions, competition is always going to be there. Yeah. But, but there's ways of managing and dealing with it. And you just got to face it head on, you know? Yeah. No, that's good. Thanks for bringing that into light, right? We're, we're surrounded by competition all the time. Right. We're surrounded by competitive people at work. We're surrounded by competitive family members. We're surrounded by, you know, applying to a new job. You're, you're competing all the time. And that's yeah. just kind of our culture right now. But when you embrace the idea of competition, not necessarily as wanting to, you know, be, uh, show yourself in, in a way that's boastful or that you're better than someone else. But when you really embrace competition as, as something that personally motivates you to become a better person or to become a better practitioner or a better, a better provider for other people, you can't go wrong with that, right? Because competition be, should be something that motivates you to become a better person. Not necessarily you know, wanting to show that you're better than someone else, but a better person. And I think that's something that we can really appreciate, especially when you were talking about, when I go to the dentist, I wanna keep coming back because I appreciate my dentist. I appreciate how they make me feel. I appreciate how they, you know, when they walk in, maybe it's, it's more of a, it's more of a family than, than an office. Right. Yeah. And this idea of this environment that dentists create is such a huge importance of sustaining patients of sustain or having customers come back in. And when you think about, you know, am I, am I, providing a better service than a dentist right down the block? Am I providing a better service so that my patients feel at home when they come in? That it's not a separate office or it's a, it's a separate entity. It's an extension of who they are. And I think that's really important. And it's something that I can see in my own experiences, the one going to the dentist, right? When I walk in, it almost feels like a child's, a child's room, right? And yeah. You know, whether they have toys, whether they have music on, whether it's the bright lights, right? Or, you know, maybe it's not just, you know, thinking about kids, but, you know, thinking about the adult aspect too. Are you going in and feeling like you're at home? Because when you're sitting down in that chair and your mouth is open and they're about to go through this procedure, right? You want to feel as comfortable as possible. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that is maybe having the TV on, playing their favorite movie or, right? right? All these different aspects of, I want to make you feel like you're at home and I'm just an extension of providing care for you. And that's a, such a, an important image or an important environment to, to put out for your, for your patients. And so when you, when you talk about this idea of thinking about the patient in mind and making it very personable and tailored for your patients, that's such a important aspect to think about. You know what you well, about the relationship aspect, yeah. you know, how many people like it's such a hot topic, Kessner, because there's this there's this Forbes article that came out by a guy mm -hmm. named Warren Geller. OK, yeah, he talked about his quote was good medicine is good business, because at the end of the day, it really there you, go. Is, you have a retention of patient population. And, yeah. Um, and then he went on to say that we really have to make our ability to practice medicine or dentistry or any form of healthcare less translate like transactional but mm. more a relationship there we go you build that trust like you said so yeah. there's so many different things that go into it psychologically uh, yeah. physically and it's it's huge that's true so then thinking about you know all those good things that you said and you know basically halfway through your experience in dental school uh, talk about what are some couple ideas that are often overlooked for those in dental school, but also for those working in private practice, for example? What are two yeah. things that are overlooked? So, um, 
and it has to do with that whole competitive aspect. You'll meet people in your uh, school career or physical work career that I, are either going to be on the same mindset as you or they're going to be worlds apart. You tend to mm. click with better with the people that kind of think like you. Yeah. So uh, I think one of the biggest things is I meet some people. I would love to go into business with them. I feel like we have the same message that we're trying to put out. Yeah. I want to open up a practice with them. Nice. It's, it's the type of culture that they, you know, it's vibes at the end of the day. Right, right. Putting out, do we have the same aspect of how we want to approach healthcare? How do we want to deliver to our patients? So one of the biggest things that I feel like most people have trouble with is I want to do it by myself. I don't need anybody, which is, you can be further from the truth. You need people. <laughs> yeah. You have to have people because you can't do things by yourself, whether it's yeah. dentistry, medicine, teaching, you need to have a community because at the end of the day, um, if it, it lines up with like constructive criticism, if right. there's nobody there to tell you what you're doing wrong, how can mm. you improve? Right. And I'm a big fan right. of constructive criticism because I like to know that I'm doing something wrong. So I don't keep doing it. Right. Yeah. So th the biggest thing is meeting people that are on the same path as you and, and seeing if you could do something together to make you, really strive for that dream strive for that vision but not stay away from people that don't think the same way as you do. Mm. because if you do that you're not getting best of both worlds right yeah you expose yourself to different mindsets and in dental school like i said you get so wrapped up with oh i gotta get better grades than the next guy oh i gotta get better grades than the next guy because i want yeah. this position. but if you work together and you both reach a certain element of like hey we're doing this together you know let's let's kick butt and uh maybe open up a practice together. That's, yeah. That will make your life easier. Then you have a friend to compete against these big conglomerates. Yeah. So that's one thing that's overlooked is you, you really have to strategize and, and get into a community that's not only there to foster a relationship, but also make you better. And I think that's something that is so, so important to handle stress too. So, yeah. you know. That's, that's beautiful, right? Changing our mindset from going from a very personal mindset from a very community-based mindset right and it's when it comes down to it right we have to care about ourselves we have to worry about our own studies and how well we're doing in school right i'm not we're not neglecting that right you definitely want to be at the top of your game in order to excel right but then in that process of excelling in that process of wanting the best version of yourself are you allowing other people to be the best version of them themselves right mm -hmm. And you want to be in a position, and this is why I love leadership and the idea of leadership, right? Is because leadership puts you at the bottom of the totem pole, yeah. right? You, you think about everyone else first and how are you going to uplift them knowing that you have all these skills, knowing that you're at the top of your game. How are you positioning yourself to be uplifting and nurturing and fostering a community-based mindset? And yeah. a lot of that is knowing the person next to you. A lot of that is keeping in mind of the people that you surround yourself with and how are you contributing to their success? Sure. And so when I think about what it means to be a dental student or just be in dentist, dental school in general, right? There's going to be competition. There's going to be this underlying factor of wanting to be better than someone else. And that comes with a lot of higher education um, spaces, yeah. right? Even in the workspaces too, right? How are you going to shine above everyone else? And in the process of doing that, right? You want to make sure that you're still highlighting the strengths of other people. I love how you said constructive criticism because in the weakness, in understanding our weaknesses, we find strength, right? Because we understand what we need to work on. We understand what we could be doing better on and then moving from there, right? That's the whole idea of constructive criticism is allowing different voices to feed into our own thoughts and making our own decisions to get better, right? Mm -hmm. And so when we get this when we're in the space of being in dental school or just any, any space that you work and collaborate with other people, constructive criticism is key because in those moments of supporting one another, in those moments of being able to grow with one another, you find relationships that are going to translate or transcend farther than just being in school. And that's yeah. the beauty of it because you earn a connection you build a network you build a relationship most importantly that where you can say with your friend do you want to start a private practice together you yeah. believe in the same things you believe in the same or you 
share similar mindsets, like you said, to the point where you feel comfortable enough taking the next big step with them, right? And exactly. you're building this culture of support. And that's such an important idea right now is that when you want to create a business, when you want to create a movement, when you want to create a better image for yourself, you're definitely not going to be able to do it alone. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of us realize that, right? But do a lot of us feel that? Exactly. Right? We, yeah. Sometimes we know what we should be doing, but do we feel that? Do we feel more inclined to take out on that step of, I know that I need support, but when am I going to ask for support? Are you going to ask it now? Are you going to build those habits where you're building a community of support? Or are you going to say, I'm going to do that later? Right. Yeah. Once I'm more established, once I'm confident in myself, then I'll ask for help or then I'll reach out, you know, and not to say that one is wrong. It's in the timing of everyone's personality or characteristics or mindset. But when you start off with that idea of that community based mindset, right, and learning to grow with one another and learning to push each other and to not be afraid to tell other people of what they're doing wrong right? Or how they're thinking, or maybe give them tips of how to be better, right? We don't need to keep those for ourselves. I yeah. think one thing that I really like to share my students, right? As a teacher is your value is based on how much you share, right? Exactly. And your value is based on what are you willing to give to other people? And so if we share a lot, our value goes up because people appreciate us. People appreciate our conversations. People appreciate you know, are, they're just drawn to us because we're willing to share something that isn't ours or maybe that's something that is ours. And so when we do that in dental school, when we do that in these different spaces, it's important to know that, yes, you're competing with one another, but you're also learning with one another. You're in these spaces together and you got into this place because you had a heart for community. You had a heart for patients. You had a heart for serving a community. And it's, it's almost counterintuitive to just want to focus on yourself yeah. and focus on building your own business or your own brand without wanting to support the person next to you, right? And so that's almost counterintuitive in a sense that you want to be supportive when you can. You want to provide and be open to constructive criticism in hopes of uplifting them so that you make yourself a better person. Yeah. So. I just think that's a really beautiful place for you to bring light to or shed light to for those that are wanting to pursuing dental school or just, you know, any healthcare industry is that it's very competitive, but at the same time too, you don't want the competition to be only about yourself, right? Yeah. Because they are the person next to you is competing. You want to compete alongside with them. So then at the end, you're at the top together, right? So that's really, it's really important. And you go through so many experiences with these people. Okay, yeah. I know that they become like family. There you, you go. Know, I have my own squad. We call ourselves the dental squad. Where there you, you go. Know, you wake up at four o'clock in the morning. You meet people in the library. You're studying at four o'clock in the morning. Yeah. You go to clinic together. If you need help in clinic, they'll come lend a hand. If somebody did a certain procedure that you've never done, they could show you how to do it. There so, you go. Yeah, you're competing, but also you're growing, like you said. And, yeah. and it's very interesting thing you know i don't know if you guys know this about kessner but kessner when i met him in college he i had no idea about microbiology nothing no, no idea i walked in there and kessner's the type of guy that he doesn't need to study that much and i noticed this about you bro i was so livid sometimes because i'd come in and i didn't know how to streak a bacteria plate kessner he would come in with the finesse of the hand <laughs> oh it's no big deal this is how you do it and that taught me a lot about like, wow, okay, there's, so there's people out there that just have so much information and skills that's easier for them. How do I get to that level? And it makes you really look up to these people because the, he wasn't shy about sharing this information with me. Like, yeah, we're all trying to get really good grades, especially if professor says, oh, we're only giving out a certain number of A's. But you meet people like Kessner and they'll tell you, this is what a catalase test. I'll never forget that, Kessner. Every time I think about microbiology, it reminds me of, you would taught me about what a catalase test does and how to streak a bacteria plate. Wow. So you always run into people that uh, at the end, you never know where that relationship is going to go. Right. Mm -hmm. And so some of these people can teach you lessons that are going to last a lifetime. Welcome it with open arms, be open-minded. It really makes you a better person. Mm. Thank you for that. That was, 
Thank really you. Humbling. Well, no, I, no, no, no. That's really lucky because of you. Kessner saved my butt so many times, guys. You have no idea. No, that's really humbling. I mean, given I did, I worked hard a lot, but I, I, I've always been an advocate for sharing what I can, right? And, you know, it's, that's not to say that we shouldn't be selfish because sometimes you need to be selfish in order to be selfless. And sure. I think a lot of that was, right, I, I took the time to, to figure out what was I good at, what, what, did, what information did I know, and then really honing in on that craft so that I would get to a place where I was able to share. And mm-hmm. so I just, I humbly thank you for, for that compliment, right? Whether it was talking about microbio or teaching others how to streak a plate. I mean, I was still learning alongside you, but I was also in my own time just practicing how to streak streak a plate, right? So I think at the same time of in my own grind, I was able to help others in their grind. And, you know, that helped vice versa. Definitely shout out to a lot of other of my friends that helped me in my journeys of learning chemistry, right? Physics and yeah. biology, right? You know, definitely struggling in those spaces allowed me to reach out to people of who I looked up to. And then in that sense, in places where I felt more comfortable with more of a, an experience or expertise in, I was able to share that. So I just love how you mentioned that in these spaces of confidence, we're able to give confidence to other people. So yeah. thank you for that. Thank you. <laughs> I'll mention it though. It's really experiences. I think you, you would say the same thing that experiences make us who we are, right? They yeah. make us to the, the mold that we aim to uh, emulate throughout our lifetime. And if, if that's another thing, Kessner, that I would stress to people getting into healthcare or any field is, your experiences make you. So make sure you experience as much as you can. You'll learn so many different things. There's a lot of things that I noticed like when I was doing interviews, most people don't know how to talk to each other. Mm. Um, Either they're young, they've never been exposed to like just having a conversation. You see an older person on the street, hey, how you doing? They have the best stories, man. Right. Um, You know, if you grew up in a certain household or family, um, like I grew up with sisters, my sisters have taught me so much, you know, and it just makes it easier to talk to different types of right. emails just for anything, right? Definitely. It makes you a more wholesome person. Yeah. I'm not saying I'm wholesome, people. All right? <laughs> saying, you know, you, you learn different things from different people and the yeah. experiences make you better. And it doesn't, if it's a bad experience or a good experience, you learn something from it, right? Yeah. I would argue that you do. And what you choose to do with that information ultimately reflects on who you are as a person. So definitely that's good. Applause to that, right? You didn't go straight into dental school, not Mm -hmm. saying that, you know, if your heart is for dental school, definitely go for it, go out on a limb, but it's okay if you're not sure where you want to end up, right? You pursued different careers before you got to dental school and you finally found what you what you're really passionate about. So that's what matters is the experiences do make who you are. So good, good word of advice for everyone listening. Mo, we've talked about a lot of great things today, reflecting on our times in microbio together from your profound stories of why you're pursuing dentistry. I'm going to, I'm going to put you in a situation and I just want you to respond. Yeah. So you're at a table, right? It's dark. You're on one side And then the light starts to turn up so that you can see the person on the other side. And you find 18-year-old Mo on the other side of the table. What do you say to him? Uh, Honestly, take a chill pill. (laughs) Uh, This is a good question, Kessner, because I would not change any of the experiences I've had. I would not be the person that I am. I were to go back and change things. So I would say keep doing what you're doing. Mm. Be open-minded and do everything and anything you can. My parents, they always taught me, like, you have three careers, buddy. Doctor, lawyer, engineer. You're not going to do any of these three? Uh, we don't know you. <laughs> but they, you know, uh, it really just teaches you how to work hard. So 18-year-old Mahmoud, I would be like, hey, man, try everything. You'll get to where you're going to get. Enjoy the ride. Mm. Uh, don't be scared to ask for help. All right. Ask a question. It's not going to hurt you. You're not going to, you know. Uh, yeah. And enjoy the people that come along the way so you know like i said we are who we uh we are what our experiences made us out to be yeah we'll just say keep doing what you're doing there you go i think for a lot of us it's what was that stop bugging kessner for help i would say stop bugging kessner (laughs) 
when we, when we when you said that our experiences experiences make us who we are that's so important to to acknowledge because for a lot of us we we go down the road of trying to find ourselves and whether you're in your mid 20s whether you're approaching your 30s or you're 18 years old right and it's easy for us to focus on our past experiences that we don't necessarily appreciate right sure. and it's very natural for us to have regret and a lot of us are better at moving forward and a lot of us are pretty good at it appreciating or embracing those experiences and i loved how you said a good reminder of don't don't regret any of your experiences because your experiences got you to where you are now it's more of how do you learn from those experiences how do you take those experiences for what they are and contribute or, or continue to contribute to motivation and persisting and learning all these better habits to make myself a better person so thank you for reminding us what it means to appreciate our experiences thank you so much for reminding us what it means to embrace competition and to make other people um, better in the process and just thank you so much for taking the time to catch up today mo that was well, everything was good my pleasure uh, guys uh sign subscribe everything kessner <laughs> is a rare person and i i wish you all the success brother it's been such a good time and uh, thank you for having me anytime anybody has questions email um no problem here there we go and we've got all his information on the website and on the social media so mo thank you so much for taking the time today until the next one got it thank you brother take care everybody later <laughs>